In Chapter 3 of Black Myth Wukong, there is a way to unlock a very specific spear that you can use as a weapon. I'm going to walk you through the quest line that helps you unlock this that starts in Chapter 2, so let's go back there first. The interaction point that you have to go to first to really start this quest line is near the Valley of Despair Sandgate Village Transportation Area. You're going to have to interact with a very specific NPC that gets introduced later on in the quest line inside of Chapter 3, but for right now, follow the pathing that I'm showing you up to a very specific shack. Now, if this is your first time here, you you'll see two monster looking rats with double heads. You'll actually want to defeat those guys first because you can't continue the conversation with the individual inside of the shack until they're defeated. Once they are defeated, you want to continue the dialogue with this individual in this shack until it is exhausted and that you can continue onto chapter three. Now progress through chapter three until you get transported to the Pagoda Realm, which is a really annoying location inside of chapter three, by far my least favorite place to be. But as soon as you get to this realm, you are very close to the NPC. That you were just talking to. As soon as you enter into this area and have available usage of your character, you'll have someone start talking to the next cell over. Make your way over to that cell and you're going to see someone slumped against the wall that you want to start interacting with. He'll start talking to you in general about the Pagoda Realm and you'll also notice very quickly you can't open this door because there is a secondary lock on here. To open this lock you need to progress the Pagoda Realm a little bit until you get to a particular boss fight. Of course first before you even leave you want to exhaust the dialogue that you have with the guy inside the cell. Once the dialogue is exhausted, let's move further up inside this realm. You know you're close to the boss when you get to the Pagoda Realm Upper Pagoda Transportation Location. Once you're at this area, you're going to be very close to that boss fight, and all you have to do is jump down to a very specific, very obvious boss fight arena. Be warned, this is a very interesting boss fight with very interesting attacks, and it's something you haven't seen yet inside this game up to Chapter 3. This is not an optional boss, and you're going to have to go through this realm and pass this boss to actually progress through the realm anyway so it'll be very hard to miss. Once you have defeated this boss there will be a spirit they need to interact with and take into your gourd. Once you have this inside of your gourd this will allow you to unlock every jail cell that has that purple ring on it. With this ability unlocked make your way back down to the lower pagoda where you first interact with the guy in the jail cell because it will now be open. Once inside of course you want to interact with the guy that is sitting against the wall. What he's going to describe to you is who he actually is. He is actually the third prince of shifting sands who you interact with the king, the first and second prince in inside the chapter 2. He'll also tell you about four captains, one you actually just defeated to unlock this door, that he wants you to go and defeat to help free their souls. So you have one down and three to go. Now thankfully the second captain is impossible to miss because it is literally barring your progression inside of chapter 3. From the Manny Will progression location inside of the Pagoda Realm, you're going to see the giant pagoda in the middle that spins around and you're very quickly going to be introduced to the boss inside of this arena. The idea is the very same as the very first captain you come across, defeat this guy a spirit will appear for you that you need to suck into your gourd and then you can progress through the chapter to get to the third captain. Now to find the third captain, you need to progress the level until you get to Valley of Ecstasy Longevity Road Transportation Location, and thankfully he's not too far from this particular transportation spot. Follow the pathing I'm showing you if you want to, but he will be difficult to miss as long as you're close by because it's going to be a giant body chilling next to a giant cliff. It's going to be really difficult to miss. Thankfully, as you could probably tell, you're not going to actually have to fight this captain. All you have to do is interact with the body and take that soul into your gourd just like the other two captains previously. Easiest of the four captains by far and thankfully the fourth is easy to find as well. We're going to quickly return back to the same transportation location we were at before, Valley of Ecstasy Longevity Road and all you have to do is actually progress the game like you normally would through this chapter to the main temple. However if this is your first time going here you're going to notice that there's going to be a giant wall of red that you need to interact with. This giant wall is going to be the third and final captain that you need to defeat. Once again very simple all you have to do is defeat this captain and suck in the spirit into your gourd to to continue this quest line. So at this point in the chapter, you should have all four of the captain spirits. So with all four of them, you want to make your way back down to the lower realm of the pagoda realm, aka the area that the prince is locked in. Interacting with the prince will allow you to give back all four of his captain souls back to him, and this will also trigger a cutscene for you. Throughout this cutscene, he'll just describe how he got to this particular situation, his remorse for having all of his members suffer because of his exploits, and at the end of the day, he's going to give you an item that will help you craft 
the spirit that we're looking for. Now this actual item that he gives you for a little bit more context is called the two by spearhead is an epic level crafting material. So of course you're gonna need that to actually make a spear. And here is the spear itself for you to take a look at with the actual attack of 75. Now obviously this isn't gonna be your best weapon inside of the game, but as you progress through the chapters at a normal pace, this is gonna be a very powerful item until you get something a bit better later on inside the game. Now my favorite part around this particular spear is because it's the first one that you get inside of the game and it also completely changes your attack patterns when you use this spear compared to your staff. You'll notice a large difference between the different attack patterns in each of the different stances so it's very interesting to use when you've been using a staff for so long inside of the Black Myth Wukong. So needless to say it adds a new variety to the gameplay that you've had up to this point in Black Myth Wukong but overall that's how you complete the prisoner questline to get this very specific spear the very first spear you can get inside of Black Myth Wukong. I hope you guys found this walkthrough guide helpful. If you did, make sure to hit the like subscribe buttons for me down below so I know that you did find this helpful. Let me know your favorite part of this quest line. Was it the boss fights or just simply getting the spear at the end? Nonetheless, let me know down in the comment. Once again, I hope you guys found this video guide helpful. I'll catch you in the next one.